can we just talk about him for a second? <laughs> What's he think he's doing? Some grocery shopping up in the mire tonight? He's just out of here all along. What's up, Goosey? Lucy Goosey? Happy... Oh, no! Oh, my God. Happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. What's going on, you guys? It's your Tuesday. It's my Monday. And it's 1.41 a.m. And I have, like, been going and 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 going all day long. And I was thinking about this earlier, and I feel really bad because um, the last couple days my videos have been, I mean, you guys are going to laugh when I say this, but like they've been almost exclusively car vlogs. Like they're not always all the time anyway. But um, I was like, okay, I need to start like not just doing car vlogs, if that makes sense. So... Um, this week, I'm going to make a huge effort to do more than that. And actually, some of the things I'm going to do, um, like the mask that I was sent, I'm going to do a mask while I'm like, and just talk, because um, I want to do that caffeine mask that I was given, and some other masks that I was giving, and try some of the teas that Anita sent me, and things like that. And... Um, so I'm going to do that in a video, and then Alex is out of town, so I'm going to like, you know... I don't know, show me cleaning the house or going through some of my favorite books or records or something. I mean, like, I want to do some actual, like, vlogging on here. And, um, I think to show different sides of myself because I also want to remember those things, like, looking back, if that makes sense. Um, so I need to take you guys down into my basement. I'm a little, uh, apprehensive to do that because it's number one, not finished and then, which I could care less about. But number two, it is literally like a graveyard of all of my mothers and all of my stuff. And it's just thrown everywhere. Okay. What's so funny is a couple years ago, um, I made a bet with Alex that I would have it done at the, like in the month of November when you look at it it's like the basement is not that big it's like well it's kind of like the full size of our house like we have a full size basement um but it's like cement floors and walls and just boxes and boxes everywhere if I took all of the books that I have down there to half price books um it would clean up half of it and then if I threw away the holiday decorations that we don't ever use anymore that would be the other thing part of the problem is and nobody understands this is that like when I make I, I make so many excuses do you guys do this I make so many excuses like back in the day what was really hard for it and I would call them mom days was it was really hard for me to go through stuff because it would like remind me of my mom or like they were things that were like emotional to me with my mom. I need to trim my beard. My beard is so full right now. Um, but that's not really the case anymore because I've pretty much gone through everything. Um, and I know that this is going to sound crazy to a lot of people out there, but you know, I had gone to <laughs> two different psychics that told me that there was something worth like hundreds of thousands of dollars in my basement. So I didn't want to throw away something that was like worth a lot of money, if that makes sense. I know that's foolish, but so I literally went through like every piece of paper and, um, Tanya got so upset with me because like I threw away like my christening outfit that my mother had saved perfectly for me in this like Marshall Fields box, um, from when I was a little kid. And she's like, I cannot believe you threw away your christening outfit, your baptism outfit. And I was like, who's gonna wear it, Tanya? Like, it's 40 year, 44 years old, you know? Like, and it's just sitting in a box. And she's like, well, I mean, I don't have any, I'm not gonna have any kids. You know, and I do think that that's the thing that's hard about not having kids. And my cousin, you know, I guess I should be giving those books to my nephews. I don't know. It's like, it's weird. It's like, what am I gonna do with that stuff? Like, I have children's books that... I guess I should give them to my nephews. I don't know. You know, it's, it's hard. It's weird. It's like, I just felt all this emotion come over my face. I don't know. It's like, it's weird. It's disconnect. It's like, like, I really honestly, like people think I lie about this when I talk about the kids, but like, I really don't want kids. Like I've never really wanted to have children and, um, but I think in being an only child and my cousin Caroline being an only child and not having kids, 
it's like, what do I do with that stuff? You know, I don't know why I just got so emotional about that. I mean, I really don't know. It's like, what do I do with all this stuff? And then like Caroline is totally not sentimental at all. I mean, she throws away everything. And so like there are days that I have, and those are the days that I call like, like mom days that I can just throw anything away. <clears throat> I don't know why I call them mom days, but like, I'm really like centered and I'm not like sentimental. I know my mom would like want me to keep some stuff, but she wouldn't want me to be like super emotional about it. I have like a box of her stuff that I've kept that like has meaning to me, like her wallet and like a pair of her glasses and stuff. Like, Why am I keeping that? I don't even know. But like, and it's this box. It's like literally like this big of her stuff, you know? But like, other than that, my mom would be like, just get rid of it. Like, why are you keeping all of this shit? I, nothing that my mother had was worth anything. She didn't have any jewelry that was worth anything. Um, her engagement ring, I found out, was, like, super cheap because she had this really, really... She wanted just a really plain ring, so she got an emerald. I think it was worth, like, $400. And um, she had some gold necklaces and stuff like that, but to be honest with you, like, I went and took that stuff to the jewelry store and got money for it. Because it wasn't anything that she wore. It wasn't like... She had one gold necklace that has... Um, that she got from Cape Cod. That has like a captain sitting at like a wheel. It's very nautical. And I love that. It's like on a chain that fits me like right here. So I always think that when I'm thinner I could wear it with like... I mean like I always have these ideas of like what I'm going to do with shit, right? But like I never do it. When I lose weight. <laughs> really? When's that going to happen? So that's why I was like, even thinking the other night, wouldn't it be so nice if I went down and I cleaned the basement while Alex was gone and when he came back, surprised him? <laughs> He'd probably be like, well, it looks nice. You were supposed to do that six years ago. <laughs> that's totally how my husband is. But it would be nice to get it done. And one of the things that I've said recently is like, I would like to have like a little, like this is going to sound so corny, but I would like to have like a little studio set up where I could like sit and make YouTube videos and just have the lights set up that I can just go down there, turn them on and just make videos. Because for me, I have to like set it all up, take it all down. It's like another half an hour or so, you know? And if I just had um, a little area down there where I could just sit there and I, like our basement is big enough and we have like this couch, like this L-shaped couch with a table that like it would be very, it would be an area that I could make very cute with like pillows and paintings and stuff like that, that it would be a perfect area for me to do my videos. And then I also have this gigantic desk that I could do videos at and film them on one side. It would be perfect if I cleaned the shit up, which I haven't done, right? So maybe I need to do that and make a little studio down there for myself. Wouldn't that be cute? Alex is like, babe, you should clean it up down there and then you could go down there and you could write. And I'm like, okay. Like, and it's weird because it's like kind of spooky down there, but I never get scared down there. Like, I've never been scared down there. Oh, so I don't know. But, like, he's just like, you could write down there. You know, you could have all your writing stuff down there. I don't want my writing stuff down there. I like writing upstairs and all of that. But he's right. I could, you know. And then we have a little area for... We were going to, like... Okay, so our plan is at some point to, like, ha hire a contractor and have them come in and put up drywall and put in, like, a full base, a full ba bathroom down there. Because all of our laundry, like our laundry, like our washer and dryer, our dryer that still doesn't work, our washer and dryer are down there. And, um, which, because we're so lazy to go buy a new dryer that I saw, I went and looked, and the cheapest is like 400 and the most expensive is like 800 or 1200 which we don't need a $1,200 dryer, but $400 we can afford. So, I mean, I spend that going to the casino in a month plus. So, anyway, um, but if you want to send me a dryer, I will not turn it down. I'm not shy. Um, I have a friend of mine that anytime something of hers breaks and she's my age, she just calls her dad and she's like, dad, I need a new washer and dryer. And she like goes to HH Greg and buys like two washer and dryer, like a washer and dryer for 1200 each. I'm like, that would be so nice. Like, I don't, I don't know that life, you know? Like, I have a lot of friends of mine that, whose parents give them, like, shit tons of money. You know, I don't hate them for it. I mean, I wouldn't. Like, if my dad was doing that, I wouldn't be like, no, dad, don't give me the money. I don't know. I honestly don't know how I would be about it. 
I probably wouldn't be like that, honestly. I wouldn't say no to my dad if he wanted to give it. If he said, Peter, I'm at the end of my life. I want to give you some money to make things easier for you. I don't think I would turn it down, but, like, that's not my experience. I mean, I have friends of mine, literally, whose parents have just, like, given them condos in Florida, given them, like, lake houses in Indiana, you know, bought them cars, bought them. I mean, that is not my experience. Like, I think that's wonderful. I'm glad that you have that opportunity. Uh, but Papa needs to work to pay his bills. And, uh... That's just my truth, you know? I don't know. I love when people say, like, if they won the lottery, they wouldn't work anymore. If I won the lottery, and, like, enough to never have to work again, like, $100 million, I, I've i always said that I would keep the contracts of the team building, coaching things that I'm doing now. Like, when I was in counseling, like, when I was doing private power, I said I would keep the clients that I have, but I wouldn't add any more. But, like, today, if I won the lottery, like, I don't think I would continue to do what I'm doing with, like, the team life coaching, executive coaching. But I would, like, put all of my time and energy into doing, like, YouTube full-time and writing full-time. Because I don't have the... Because I have to go do these other things. Um like consultations and stuff like that. I just don't have the time to do some of that stuff, you know? Which I would love to do that. I mean, God, I am not saying this to start a bitching and complaining session, but I am so tired of hearing YouTubers complain. I'm sorry if you're one of those people out there. Talk to me. I will help you with time management. But I am so sorry. I am so tired of hearing people complain about, you know, like, I don't have time to make these videos and, you know, blah, 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 whatever. And now that YouTube isn't paying me, I'm going to have to go get a paying job. Whatever. You know, I probably work. I don't work 40 hours a week. That's just not my truth. I work probably 30 hours a week. But, you know, it was my plan by the time I was 45 to basically be pretty pretty retired. And low income pretty entire, retired. Like, I didn't want... I wanted to be able to do things, but I didn't want money to mean a lot to me. I don't know if that makes sense. Like, I feel like when I was working... 50 hours a week in a treatment facility and I was seeing 30 clients a week in my private practice. So that's what, you know, 80 to 90 hours a week and 70 to 80 hours a week. I was making a shit ton of money, but I was also spending a shit ton of money. Like I wasn't saving it. I was frivolous with what I was spending. And now that I make less and I, I do okay, you know, Alex and I do, we do well considering this, you know, in this country and this times, but like, we don't spend a lot. Like even my husband that loves like clothes and stuff, like he will spend like, he's not somebody that would spend like never in a million. I mean, he would, if he had the money, like $500 on a pair of shoes, but no, he's not like that, but he'll go like to Nordstrom rack and buy like an $80 pair of shoes, but then he treats them so well that he really takes good care of it. Now for me, my luxury things that I like to buy are like books, <laughs> just Sharpies, things like that, you know, like plants, but he would never buy that stuff. See? So he would say, well, you spend your money that way and I spend our money this way. And it's true. But we don't either one of us, like, just frivolously shop all the time. I mean, never. Never do we do that. And, you know, Alex is such a hard worker. Like, he worked full time while he was in school. And so did I. And, um... So, for all of you out there in college that are working full time or working part time, hey, I feel your pain. I worked full time when I was in graduate school. I did. I had to work. The, I did family group the day that I graduated from uh, graduate school. And I remember later somebody said to me, "You didn't go to your graduation." I said, "I didn't have an option." There, you, I, you do what you have to do in life. You know, it just kills me when I. I don't know. I. I, I don't know. But if I won the lottery tomorrow, that's what I would do. And I would travel a lot. But I wouldn't buy some, like... Like, Alex and I have talked a lot about this. Like, I wouldn't buy some ginormous mansion. We would have people come in and make our... Because we love our condo. It's the perfect size for us. Our condo is small, you guys. It's like 1,300 square feet. 1,400 square feet max. Um, and it's two people and three dogs. And a one-car garage at that. So, you know, like... But Alex and I have talked about, like, if we won, if we came into a lot of money or if whatever, what we would do. And 
I think it's an interesting question, the lottery question. Like, if you won the lottery, what would you do, you know? And um, I think we would, like, what we've talked about is that we would have the condo made exactly how we wanted it. Like, we would have the kitchen completely revamped. We would have the bathroom upstairs and downstairs completely revamped. We would have the basement redone so that we could actually have guests come and stay and have the whole downstairs basement turned into da downstairs basement. We would have the whole basement turn into, like, part of it, like, a second bedroom, and then the other part of it, like a TV room, you know what I mean? Like an entertainment room. And then we would probably buy a place in South Florida, like a condo, but not a million dollar condo. We would probably buy something, you know, that was like something two bedroom small, like not right on the ocean off a little bit. And then we would travel and do stuff. But like Alex is like, listen, I've worked my ass off to work, to get where I'm at doing what I do. Like, I'm not going to give that up. Even if we won a hundred million dollars in the lottery, like he, he's so passionate about doing what he does that he doesn't want to stop it even, I mean, he could have 300, 500 million dollars in the bank and he wouldn't want to stop that. And, um, and he's not driven by money. Like, don't get me wrong, the money's nice for him, but like, he just really loves doing what he does. And, um, it's admirable, you know? And like, when I see his mom, like his mom is such a hard worker, you know? And, she started her own business and she's like tutors in Spanish and does translations and she's like big translations of things. And, um, you know, she works till eight or nine o'clock every night and even on Saturdays. And, um, he, I think he gets that work ethic from her. You know, what's interesting is that I'm like a really hard worker as well. Like, I'm not just saying that like pat my back, but I am. And I never had a job in high school. Like my dad was like, your job is, uh, your school. Never asked me for my grades, but my job was school, right? In the summers, he'd always be like, you have to get a job. And I'd be like, okay. And then I'd be like, can I borrow $20, put gas in my car to go look for uh, applications? Never got a job in high school. Dealt drugs. Not proud of it. And, uh, you know, my dad gave me money up until I was in, like, you know, anyway. I'm not proud of that. But, like, when I started working working in the treatment facility, like, I was like, I never called in sick, like, never, and if I, I always came in a half an hour early and left, you know, like, half an hour, an hour, sometimes an hour and a half late, because I just loved being there, um, and, to, except for towards the very end, if you've heard me talk about that, like, I just didn't want to be there anymore, and it was really affecting my, um, being on time, but still, I didn't call in sick, because I was like, I've always felt like if I call in sick and I, you work in an environment like that where like somebody else is going to have to run my group or somebody else is going to have to do family sessions and things like that, then that's not fair to that other person. So like I just never called in sick. A lot of times what I would do though is if I was really sick, which I've been really blessed in my life to not get that sick ever. Like <laughs> I used to say that, remember? And then people would say on here, they'd say in the comment sections, um, I'm going to count how many times you say you don't get sick and then you get sick. I haven't been sick for a while though. Have I? Right. So, um, I should be thankful for that. But I, um, but like if I was sick, I would go in and I would go to my supervisor and I would say, Hey, do you care if I run group and chart it and then leave? And she'd say, are you, do you not feel well? And I said, no. And she'd say, okay. And so then I would do that. I would go home and sleep the rest of the afternoon because I knew that I needed to come back in the next day, but like just calling in sick. And we always knew like when we got somebody, we hired somebody and they'd start calling in sick right away. We're like, Oh, this is trouble. Cause the majority of us, they're never called in sick. Not even the women that I worked with that were pregnant. And most of them got pregnant at one point while I worked there or, you know, twice while I worked there, a couple of them and, um, worked right up to their pregnancies. I remember that my one supervisor, when I was, had been there like two years, she was on call in labor. Okay. And she called me and she said, I'm in labor and she's going to have her husband bring the page. She goes, I've got to have him bring you the pager. I can't be on call. And they keep on paging me. And I said, okay. And I said, well, you're right across the street. I'll just come over there and pick up the pager. And she's like, well, I don't want you to see me like this. And I said, okay. So her husband brought down the pager. I'll never forget. She was like crying on the phone and making no non, no sense whatsoever about these watching some movie about a horse on lifetime movie network. But you know, like, I wouldn't trade any of that in, you know, like, 
I made six twelve an hour when I started working in a treatment facility, and I was so excited to get that job. I will never forget my first paycheck was like four hundred and forty two dollars or something for two weeks for eighty hours. I was like. Oh my God, I could have made this literally an hour dealing drugs. That's what I thought. And I was like, at that point, a year sober, right? And I'm thinking, I could have made this in an hour dealing drugs. Like, it's just so sad, you know? Or I could have made this like, my dad would have given me this money if I would have begged bad enough for it. But I didn't want to be that person anymore. I didn't want to be that person that begged my dad for money, you know? My, my dad today helps me with some medical issues because my insurance doesn't cover all of it. But other than that, my dad doesn't give me any money whatsoever. And, you know, like, I never see my dad. And when the whole thing started with him helping me, it was supposed to only be, like, two or three months. And he just kept on sending it in the mail. And I was talking to Tanya, and I talked to my sponsor about it. And, you know, like, one time I texted my dad, and I said... Hey, I got the check that you sent me in the mail. Thank you. You didn't, and listen, okay, we're talking not a lot of money. It's not like I'm talking huge amounts of money, right? But I said, you didn't have to do that. And um, he didn't respond to me. And I was like, this is really weird that he didn't respond to me. My dad always responds to me in text, right? So I talked to Tanya and I talked to my sponsor. My sponsor said to me, maybe this is what he can do for you. Like, maybe this is what makes your dad happy. You know, you don't see your dad a lot. He's extremely busy. My dad is so busy. My dad is 76 years old and still works like 50, 60 hours a week. And um, so they were like, you know, maybe that's all your dad can do for you. Let him do it. Let your dad do that if he wants to do that for you. I was like, all right, you know, so. My camera's getting really hot. So I'm gonna um, stop for a couple minutes and let it cool down. It's got this orange button on it right there. <gasps> I'm gonna let it cool down a little bit and um, come back. What would you do if you won the lottery? Like tomorrow, what would you do? Would you buy a Range Rover? Would you buy a Porsche Cayenne? Would you go to Mexico? Would you save it? I would save it. I would also give a lot of it away to my family. You know, set up college funds for all the nephews and little kids and stuff so they never had to worry about that. I think education is important, and I think to be able to be in college and not have to worry about finances is a huge gift. My dad gave, the two greatest gifts my dad ever gave me, that both resulted out of their divorce contract, but my dad paid for my, all of my education, and my dad um, also paid for all of my treatments. And um, every year on my spotty birthday, I call my dad, and I, I, I could get teary thinking about it right now. And I always say, Dad, thank you so much for my education and for my life and for paying for those treatments. I feel so honored, you know, that I still worked full time when I was in school because I loved to work. It was fun, you know, it gave me purpose. And it wasn't like he was paying for everything. So if I wanted to go do something like go bowling, I had to have a job to make some money, right? But what a gift. You know, what an awesome gift. And what makes me sad is that even if I had kids, I couldn't do that for them today. I don't make that kind of money, you know? Why do I cry all the time? I don't know. It just make, It fills me with joy. I just think that's such an awesome thing, you know? I love my dad. He's such a great guy. He is such an awesome man. And he's really taught me to be a really ethical person. And My dad said to me one time, I, said some, I was asking him about a business decision. He goes, don't do it. And I said, okay, why? And he goes, your integrity is all you have. And um, once you give your integrity away, you can never get it back again. And you, Peter, he said, are a man of character. And it's taken you 20 years to get here. Don't give your integrity away. Don't give your character away. He said, you've worked too hard for it. I think all those small things that we do with in life, you know, that give us integrity or character or the things that we do to make us better people, don't give it away. Just don't, you know? 
not at the expense of an easy an easy way just stick to your morals you have to stick to your beliefs it's so important you know <laughs> and like I've said a lot in my videos that um, you know those things that we believe so fondly Right when I get to a good moment, my camera shuts off, right? But what I was gonna say was that those things that we believe so fondly, those principles that we live by, principles only mean something if we stick to them when they're inconvenient. Um, I actually heard that in the movie, uh, The Contender, and it just, I, I believe that so true. So, that is so true, you know, that if you have principles in life, Honesty, humility, <clears throat> you know, service to others, all of those things, you know. <clears throat> if you stick to those principles when they're inconvenient, then you truly do have those principles. Um, it's interesting because on YouTube, those have been tested quite a bit for me. Um, You know, kindness and compassion and honesty, especially. You know, and I ask myself every night some of those questions. Those are some things that I do with my 12-step work. You know, as I ask myself, have I been kind? Have I been caring? Have I hurt others? You know, what is going on with my camera is, like, not focusing. Do you see that? Why is it focusing on the window? There. What is going on? There. There. But those are things that I ask myself, you know, like, on a daily basis before I go to bed. And sometimes I don't meet up to standards, you know. Sometimes there's work I need to do. Sometimes I need to be more kind. Kinder? Sometimes I need to be kinder. I need to be more compassionate. Sometimes I, you know, need to make an apology to somebody and I need to take responsibility for my actions. That's freedom for people, you know? Have you ever been hurt so bad that when somebody comes to you, sorry just isn't enough? But if they say to you, like, hey, I really wronged you, you know? Like, what I did was not wrong. That was not my, that was not, what I did was not right. That wasn't my intention. I didn't mean to hurt you. Um, what can I do to make this up? Like, I think, have you ever had somebody do that to you? Like, I have. Like, that's powerful, you know? And then there are other people that I wished I had heard that from. Not for me so much, but for them. I don't know if that makes sense, but it's like, I thought so much more of you that I really... Like, I have a really good friend of mine in life like this that I've known for years and years and years and years. And she just has no capacity to... I've talked about this on here in a video last week sometime. She has really no capacity to understand, like, how, like, she impacted my life. And, you know, I don't... I don't feel like today I need an apology from her. Like... And that may sound like bullshit. Maybe I am bullshitting myself. I don't know. An apology would be nice. To, 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 an unsolicited apology to have her say, listen, I really treated you like shit and I'm sorry. I can't imagine what that would do. You know, I think it just, I have a lot of hurt feelings over it. And I'm not a bullshit artist. I have feelings. My feelings get hurt. Okay. I did this whole video a long time ago on tough skin and I don't have tough skin. And all these people were like, well, if you don't have tough skin, you shouldn't be on YouTube. If you don't have feelings, you need to go get yourself checked out. Okay. Seriously. Because if you're a human being, you should be empathetic towards others. You should have feelings. You should have your feelings impacted. Anger is a feeling. Happiness is a feeling. Sadness is a feeling. Anger is usually masking hurt feelings. It's usually a secondary emotion, but it is a feeling, okay? There's a range of all kinds of feelings out there. And to say, have tough skin and don't get your feelings hurt, well... 
how do I have control over that? That means I have control over what other people do and say, right? I don't, I don't have that kind of control. I have control over how I mend myself and I work on myself. But so I have made it my point in life that when I truly feel that I've done somebody wrong or hurt them, even if I don't necessarily see it, but I can see how they would be hurt by it, I don't want anybody to hurt as a result of anything that I've put out there into the world. Does that make sense? So, therefore, like, I need to make that right. <clears throat> I need to make amends for that behavior. And making amends, like the 21st Amendment, okay, is not just apologizing. It's correcting the behavior, taking responsibility for it, and saying it won't happen again. Now, I'm a human being. That doesn't always happen, right? But I work pretty hard on doing that. It's like, I have had so many, listen, in the last couple weeks and last couple months, I've had so many people request on my main channel that I just drag a couple YouTubers, like just drag them, right? For humor factor. Well, okay, for humor factor. But I think one of these people specifically, I've probably heard, you know, in comments that I've made about, like, her in the past. And I said I wasn't going to do that anymore. And I do little joking, kind of shade throwing. And I know she can handle it because she does it right back to me, whether people realize it or not, she does. So I know she can handle it. But to come right out and make some, like, really... Vi I'm not going to do that. Like, listen, wh what I think about her is really none of it my business anyway, or her business. It doesn't really matter. I don't know her, you know? And, um... This is another drama channel. I want to make this very specific that you guys know who it is without me saying. It's another drama channel, okay? So anyway, and I and listen, and people think I have all these hard feelings towards her. I have no hard... It, I have no hard feelings towards her. I really don't. And, um... So, I mean, it's kind of funny, this back and forth that goes on between us. But anyway, I would never do that to another human being. I would never drag somebody. And I think that's what people didn't understand about my main channel to begin with. And why, like, it went back and forth. And then I lost so many subs because people were confused about what my content was. And that's okay. That, that's okay. Because, see, I had to go through all that to realize who I was and who I wanted to be on that channel. And it's really easy... You know, it's like being in high school, and it's like you're standing in a circle, and it's like really easy to be the one going, look at her hair. Her hair is disgusting, right? And everybody's like, oh. And you go, my God, her hair looks like, you know, I don't know, like, I didn't even make some, I can't even think. But you say something, and everybody laughs at you, and then you get all the attention, right? That's bullying. It's real easy to be that person. We've all been that person in some situation. If you've never been that person, you're a much better person than I am, okay? We've all been, I think, to some degree, that person. What's harder is to sit there and, and to not say anything is to remain part of it. To be a better person would be to stand there and say, you know what, I don't think it's really that nice of us to be saying this stuff about somebody, you know? And... I'm a work in progress. I'm not there yet. I don't know that I'll ever get there, you know? I just try to want to... I just want to be a better human being. I want to be a better version of myself. You know, I want to live by those principles. That principles only mean something when they're inconvenient. For me, it would be so easy with my sarcasm and my cynicism and the humor that I got from my father to get on camera and just make some dragging video. And I probably will do it again sometime and I'll probably regret it a week later. <laughs> Because I'm just being honest. It's who I am. You know, but it, it's very easy for me to do that. And I understand now why people think that my dad's so funny. But my dad is so funny because somebody is always the butt of his jokes. And it's typically my my stepmom and my, or myself, you know? And so when you grow up in there, it doesn't feel very good. Because you're always the one... I mean, he never said hurtful things. But, you know, he's like, my dad always wants to tell this joke. I mean, it's not even a joke. It's a true story about... When he wanted to teach me how to shoot a rifle, and he took me out in the middle of nowhere, and I had this little hat on and cowboy boots and all this kind of stuff, and he's shooting, and I'm like, got my hand on my hip like this, and my my dad always loves to tell all of my boyfriends a story, and he's like, oh yeah, and Peter said to me, I was trying to teach him how to do it, and he goes, Dad, I'm so bored. 
this is what I said. Dad, I'm so bored. Can't you just shoot the gun and I'll be the cowgirl? <laughs> you know, or this time that we went to like, um, St. Martin and all of our clothes got lost. I was like in 10th grade and all of our clothes, like our baggage never came. It like got lost somewhere. I don't think we ever got it back, honestly. And, um, so we had to do like one of those like vacation things where you go shopping. Remember that movie where they go shopping and they buy all the new clothes? So we went into town and we bought all these new clothes. Of course, my dad, you know, my stepmom bought some cute like, you know, sundresses and things like that and bathing suits. But like my dad bought like literally like three pairs of like khaki, like mid thigh shorts and like five t-shirts. And that was his for the week. Me? Well, we went into some store and I remember I bought very similar stuff to him, like t-shirts that said just St. Martin and stuff like that on it. But Back then, St. Martin wasn't very touristy. We were staying in this little house off in the middle of nowhere. And, um, but I bought these. <laughs> they looked like pajamas, but they weren't. It was a polo shirt that had a white collar on it. But the shirt was all pineapples, and it had matching pants. And I had to have the shirt. Why does this keep on going in and out tonight? I don't understand that. But I had to have this outfit. And my dad was like, where are you going to wear it? And I was like, don't worry about it. Like, this is the hottest thing, right? I wanted this outfit so bad. It was like these pants that, like, were drawstring. And they were like, I mean, I, in retrospect, they were so foolish. I'm like, what were you thinking? My dad, still to this day, loves to tell that pineapple story. Oh, he just gets cackling so hard telling that pineapple story. You should have seen Peter sitting out on the front porch in this outfit, these khaki, whatever, these pineapple outfits. But then that's where I believe that it's good to laugh at yourself. You know, like, why take yourself so damn seriously? You know, if somebody's taking something about you, like... If somebody would, like, body shame, like me, that would be really hurtful. Or, you know, like, back in the day when I first started making videos, the age thing doesn't really bother me, but I will say it bothers me sometimes. It's like, I can't do anything about it. Um, my voice used to really hurt when people would say stuff about it because that's a long-term thing that's been going on. The body shaming thing, it would probably hurt a little bit if somebody got on camera and started talking about how fat I am and stuff. But I mean, it's like, I know that. So it's not like, you know, whatever. But at some point, I think it's okay to stand up and say, you know what, like, you have to be what you want to receive. So if I don't want people doing those things to me, then I can't do that in return, if that makes sense. I'm not very good at that. I'm still a hypocrite a lot, you know? And that's why I say I'm a work in progress. Do you see this camera going in and out? And now it's hot. The orange thing is back on there again. This is nuts tonight, you guys. So anyway. So I guess my message to you... Why is it doing that tonight? There. So my message to you is, remember this. Principles only mean something if you stick by them when they're inconvenient, okay? And second, deuces, I'm gonna start doing more vlogs where I'm showing you my whole life. Spirit fingers. This was such a ramble tonight, wasn't it? Anyway, I gotta get off here before this thing shuts down because I just know it's gonna shut down any second. I don't know why it's doing that. I do have my heat on, so it's sitting right on top of it. That might be why. All right, guys. I love you, and I will talk to you later. I hope you have a wonderful Tuesday. Bye.